Hey everyone, it's Xander, and welcome back to Kingdom Hearts. It wouldn't be me if I didn't forget stuff, so here we are at Hollow Bastion again, going to the library. There's two things off the top of my head that I know I need to get here. Well, three. Alright, first off, we talk to Belle here. And we get... Divine Rose, another Keyblade. This one, obviously, we're not going to be using, but I grabbed it because I'm trying to get all the Keyblades. I'm a collection horror, apparently. Even though I never 100% games, all of a sudden, I gotta get everything. Even though I've totally said, screw Monstro. The whale can go to hell. Alright. So, we have Oblivion right now. Uh, let's see where I can find these at. Alright, here is Lionheart, actually. Very nice looking. It, let's see. It has one less attack power than Oblivion, and it also raises max HP. So, it might be worth equipping, and... Oh, uh, why not? I'm only losing one hit point, and I'm gaining an MP slot. That'd be kind of useful. Lady Luck, on the other hand... Sorry, not Lady Luck. Divine Rose, on the other hand, is very, very short. You know I don't like short keyblades. Powerful weapon that... Bleh, a powerful weapon that is difficult to deflect, capable of dealing a string of critical blows. Lionheart's special feature also deals great physical damage, raises MP by 1, enhances magic and summon power. So I'm going to put that on for now. The other thing I need to do here... I need to find Aerith. She should be in the library somewhere by now, I think. Well, here's Yuffie. That's a start. Well, let's see. Yuffie hasn't lost her mind. Where is Aerith? Aerith and Squall should... Or Leon, whatever you want to call them. Should all be down here. Okay, there she is. Let's talk to you first. You know, you really should have told me this stuff at the beginning of the game. You guys tell me, oh, Anselm was our great leader. And now, all of a sudden, you... Well, maybe they didn't know. Yeah, that looks like that gave me two extra MP things. Well, yeah, because the other keyblade took away one. So by default, I would have one more. Plus, I gained one more for having Lionheart on. Okay. Alright. Aerith has some stuff. Report 2, Report 4, Report 6, Report 10. We've got some reading to do, guys. Talked to her again, disappeared, and this world fell into the darkness. It was believed he died defending people from the Heartless. But Anson was the one that brought them here. It's in darkness, but there's still a little light to protect you, Sora. And here we go! The other thing I wanted. Cura has been upgraded to Curaga. That was the big thing I wanted to get here. Now let's take a look at the journal and see what information we can find. Ansem's reports. It is my duty to expose what this darkness really is. I shall conduct the following experiments. Extract the darkness from a person's heart. Cultivate darkness in a pure heart. Both suppress and amplify the darkness within. The experiments caused the test subject's hearts to collapse, including those of the most stalwart... I don't know how you pronounce that, sorry. How fragile our hearts are. My treatments produced no signs of recovery. You're a horrible person. I could find those who had completely lost their hearts beneath the castle. Sometime later, I went below and was greeted by the strangest sight. Creatures that seemed born of darkness. What are they truly? Are they truly sentient beings? Could they be the shadows of those who lost their hearts in my experiments? You're a horrible monster. Report 3. The shadows that crawl beneath the castle. Are they the people who lost... 
How many people did you experiment on? Are they the people who's who lost their hearts or incarnations of darkness or something entirely beyond imagination? All my knowledge has provided no answer. One thing I am sure of is that they are entirely devoid of emotion. Perhaps further study will unlock the mysteries of the heart. Fortunately, there is no shortage of tests. You are a horrible, horrible person. I look forward to killing you. They are multiplying underground even at- Oh, you're talking about the heartless are multiplying. Okay. They are multiplying underground even as I write this report. By the way, you're still a horrible person. They still need a name. Those who lack hearts. I will call them the heartless. The heartless appear in groups and are multiplying rapidly. I provided them both living and non-living samples. Of what? They responded only to the living. They seem to multiply after absorbing something from the living creatures. Their prey vanishes without a trace. We witnessed this at the beginning of the game. I believe the Heartless are taking hearts. They are born from those who've lost their hearts and thrive on hearts seized from others. The hearts taken by the Heartless become Heartless themselves. Though I lack proof, I am confident in my, this hypothesis. I must also study their behavioral principles. Though they lack emotions, they do seem to have some intelligence. How to communicate with them? It just occurred to me. Could they be the darkness in people's hearts? I thought we already covered this. To study heartless behavior, I picked one out for observation. It wiggled the sentinel and, as if sensing a target, headed deep into the castle. In the deepest part of the castle, its antennae began vibrating, as if searching for something. Suddenly, a strange door appeared. I'd never known of its existence. It had a large keyhole, but it didn't seem to be locked, so I opened the door. What I saw on the other side mystified me. What was that powerful mass of energy? That night, I observed a great meteor shower in the sky. Could be related to the door that I have opened? A massive core of energy lay beyond the door sought by the Heartless. It may well be the ultimate goal of all Heartless. But what is that energy? I had devised hypothesis based upon my observations of the Heartless. The heartless feed on others' hearts, and they yearn for that energy core. That thing beyond the door must be a heart too, the heart of this world. There is no proof, but having felt that emits energy, I am certain, that was the heart of the world. The heartless are trying to take hearts not only from all living creatures, but from the world itself. But what do they mean to do with the heart of the world? By the way, I'm sorry I couldn't do these reports sooner. I am now studying material from the meteors that rained down that fateful night. What a find! The material is foreign to our world. It is elastic to the touch. And when two pieces are combined, they bond easily. He's talking, of course, about gummy pieces. None of the records I've scoured even mention such a substance. Was it introduced to this world when I opened the door? I wonder how many other such materials drift through the atmosphere of this tiny world. I wish I could soar off and find out. Could there be uncharted worlds up there? My curiosity never ceases to grow, but I should stop speaking of such unrealistic dreams. For now, there is no way to venture outside this world. My people and I are all but prisoners of this tiny place. Huh, sounds like Riku. There is no doubt that the Heartless are deeply connected to people's hearts. Further study may unravel both their motivations and mysteries surrounding the heart. Or shrouding the heart. As a start, I have built a device that artificially creates Heartless. By recreating the conditions that spawn the Heartless naturally, I should be able to produce them artificially. This device is the culmination of all my research thus far. The machine's test runs successfully... Okay, the machine's test runs successfully create a Heartless. This may be a step towards creating a heart from nothing. The artificially and natural created heartless showed nearly identical traits, but the two types should remain distinct for the purpose of this experiment. So I will mark the ones that are created artificially. That's why you see the same emblem on almost all of them except for a few, like the shadows and the dark balls.
Simply astonishing. Today I had a guest from another world. He is a king and built... He is a king as vessel is built from... Uh. Today I had a guest from another world. He is a king and his vessel is built of the material that composed the meteors. He called the pieces gummy blocks. It seems that my opening that door has opened a path to interworld travel. We talked for countless hours, but one story in particular caught my interest. That of a key called the Keyblade. The Keyblade is said to hold phenomenal power. One legend says its wielder saved the world, while another says that he wrought chaos and ruined upon it. I must know what this Keyblade is. A key opens doors. It must be connected to the door that I have opened. And the last report. Oh my god, I've wasted 11 minutes doing this. Just as people have hearts, so do the worlds. The same can be said of the stars in the night sky. And deep within each world lies a door to its heart. The heartless desire those hearts. Born out of the darkness in people's hearts, they seek to return to a greater heart. Yes, that's it. The heartless come from people's hearts, as does the darkness. Is the core of the world's heart the world of the heartless? I will pursue the answer there and become all-knowing. My path is set. I shall seek out the wielder of the Keyblade and the princesses. My body is too frail for such a journey, but I must do this. I will cast it off and plunge into the depths of darkness. And that's it. Alright, I don't think there's anything else to do here. I've talked to everyone. The one last thing I want to do is... I need to explore that alternate path of the lift stop. That's it. I also did a little looking up of what abilities I still have to get. There's two air combo pluses and two combo pluses that you get total for Sora. I think you can expand them greater in the sequel game. I'm not sure though. Alright, hopefully the path is still turned on this track and it will send me to the right instead of the left. We'll find out. After this, I'm going back to the Coliseum and I'm taking on the other question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark challenge. AKA the gold cl go Yeah, I just can't talk anymore. The gold cup. Why does that connect to something else? Is this just a shortcut up? I'm gonna feel really stupid in a minute. I don't think this Hopefully I haven't already been here. I don't like wasting time. Alright, this was the other side, which means there should be a chest somewhere. Yep. Right there. It's not really going to be anything I care about, but I might as well show it. Probably... It's got to be a gummy piece. There's like... What they love to do is just give me gummy pieces. Yep, I can't even carry any more of it. That's fantastic. Waste of time. Let's head back down. So, great episode so far. I go back to grab stuff I missed and I read a bunch of reports. Oh, well, the more you know, right? So, the plan now is... Uh, I think I've got all of my spells now. I may be missing one somewhere. Either I'm going to take on the gold cup, then I... I'll get started on the final world, but I won't be being it, obviously. Yeah, that last question mark space you saw on the world map, that's the final destination. I beat that, the game's over. However, we have stuff to do before that point. So, I can get started on it, because there's at least one ability I pick up there that I kind of want. That'll come after I do 
the gold cup, and then, uh... Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing at this point. <laughs> Why am I still talking? Where am I going? Damn. Alright, here we go. Back to the gummy ship I go. Oh yeah, I am senseless. I need to get to work on that at some point. Hopefully this doesn't take me too long. Wait, what the hell? I don't remember that pot being back there. Let's smash it! Ooh, just give me something. Okay. Huh, I never noticed that before. Alright. This one I don't think I'm going to get totally curb stomped on. It could still happen though. It's it's not a walk in the park, that's for sure. I'd say this is harder than the Hades fight. If you're not careful and you don't know what you're doing. But at the same time, it's a great way to grind. So, the gold match. Let's see what we get for this. Did you think we were only going to fight one Titan in all of the Coliseum? Oh no. Say hello to the Ice Titan, baby. Now this is a Titan fight. This is how you get a lot of tech cards. He has a lot of health. Most of the time, you're just going to be bouncing his spells back in his face. And each time you heard that, that was 24 attacks per icicle. Not just that one guard. Each icicle counts as a tech guard. You definitely get a lot from doing this. Oh crap. So, strategy. You're going to want to stay moving a lot. Anytime he's stomping on the ground, don't be near him. You stay up in the bleachers for this fight, honestly. Get used to tech guarding and move like hell when he punches the ground. And just stay up on your healing. It's definitely a good idea to have cure by this point. Now the giant ones you can't really do much about. So you learn what he is shooting at you. Obviously he only stomps whenever um Yeah. I can't talk while I'm fighting. He only stomps around until he's facing you. Then he'll do whatever it is. Damn. That's kind of annoying. See? Level up out of that. Obviously, the easy way to avoid his attacks is just glide. There's not a lot I have to say about this fight. It's very repetitive, I can't deny that. But it keeps you on the edge of your seat. And just from tech guarding, I've taken a lot of health off him. After so many hits, you... there. You stun him and you can actually wail on him properly. Also, I did some research on that, um... Ars Arcanum attack. 
uh, you do do multiple bashes, six to seven. I just suck at the timing. I don't know what the timing is. Just keep mashing the tech guard and watch out for that. Yeah, now we start getting to more attacks. Now I've actually pissed him off. And he... Oh, God. I... Yeah, I'm suddenly remembering how much I hate this. There's one more attack he has where he will basically free... That's not it. Thank God that's not it. He has an attack where he will basically freeze the very spot you're standing on. That is not fun. And pretty much any time he walks now, he's going to be shooting icicles. So, it's probably a good strategy not to even stop. Don't give him an opening. Because with each step, he's sending out icicles for you to shoot back in his face. Those, obviously, you can't really do anything about. The giant spikes of doom you can't do anything about. This fight could take a while, by the way. Okay, that attack again. I can deal with that attack. Ow. The hardest part is going to be keeping your health up, watching out for his attacks like that. You had to have really good reflexes. Alright, he's stunned again. Sweet. Bash him in the face. Obviously, fire spells would be a good idea here. But I didn't redo really my quick select. And I don't care all that much either. Don't be anywhere near him when he revives. Oh god. Yeah, he really gets pissed off. Okay, can I stop being pinned down? Again, lots of tech points. But you don't get for those. Alright, that's three. Thank you, something I can actually bounce in his face. I'm gonna lose this fight if I'm not careful. This is gonna be embarrassing if I lose this fight. <laughs> Nothing else, get the hits in so you refill your magic meter. And then get the hell away from him when he gets pissed. Now it starts getting a little bit chaotic in trying to hit him. My advice is make him keep moving. Make him try to catch up to you. Fly around circles so he spends more time stomping after you, sending out icicles, than actually properly attacking you. The more you avoid him, the better. That's the attack to watch out for. That's also your chance to get stuff up like I just did. Okay, please give me an opening again. I miss that. And damn it. You I'm realizing you 
probably want to keep going around him and, uh... What is this, counterclockwise? Yeah. I can do this all day, pal. Okay, not really. So, could you please, you know, hurry up and give me an opening? Ow, damn it! Okay, stop being an asshole. Oh, here we go. Oh, great, thanks. Ow. My face! Oh shit. Definitely want to make sure you are not in the way of that attack. I can't even tell where the hell I am. I am so freaking lost by now. Notice how I'm actually winning. That's the sad part. I'm just running away and deflecting shots, but it's working. Oh god, he did not stay stunned for very long. Thank you. Okay, that's not going to help me much. Can we go back to the, you know, the easy to the... Alright, so it's probably a good idea to actually make him properly attack you every now and then. Because then he'll eventually slip up and do something like that. You know, stuff you can fight. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Watch out for that. And that. Fuck. That was cheap. And I had that fight, too. That pisses me off. Maybe if I had better items. Okay, so that's two special matches I've failed now. And I'm sure I got cut this by now. What's my time at? Yeah, 27 minutes. See you guys in the next part.